Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another edition of Up and In It. I'm your host, Adrian Babishoff, and if you're new here, welcome as well. And if you're wondering what the show is about, it's entirely dedicated to creating an alternative lifestyle design that improves quality of life for both people and for the planet, exploring alternatives to the daily grind through liberation and independence, moving you from surviving, surviving to thriving and living life raw. I almost messed up the intro, look at that. Reporting to you guys live from my mobile studio. Today we're at the beach. Uh, in Northern California or Southern California, North County, San Diego. Um, this is a potty mouth podcast. Every once in a while, some f bombs fl fly out. It's just the way I talk, so I apologize for that. If you don't like it, then uh, uh, sorry. But uh, yeah, but today I want to get you guys on to step one in gardening, and it's um, it's the biodegradable, biodegradable container gardening, and it's the biodegradable container gardening way, which is way different than anything else that was out there. And I want to encourage people to start growing their own food, uh, doing their own thing here. And I want to start it off with a story of how I think I got affected uh, by a seed that was planted in, into me. My mother gave me a package of seeds of nasturtiums uh, about 25, 30 years ago. And uh, I planted them in a planter around a, our house. Uh, next, I didn't really think much of it. Uh, and I didn't think much of it once the uh, plants, the nasturtiums, which they actually were, and they, they popped. I really didn't think much of it. I just saw it and I was like, wow, that was interesting that I just threw some seeds in some soil and the nasturtiums popped and started surrounding like the whole front half of the house. And it just did something to me visually. Um, and I think at these, this time right now, it's actually, we're in mid-July 2020 here. We got the COVID-19 thing. And I think a lot of people should consider growing their own food because we don't know where things are gonna go. There could, here in California, they're talking about another lockdown. And there's, whether times were good, times were bad, whether they lock it down or don't, gardening just does something to you emotionally, spiritually, intellectually, I believe. Uh, as a child, you know, as my story, I just told you guys what it did to me. It, it kind of introduced me into just, just how this, this life in general, putting seeds in the ground and getting fruition. So, and I know a lot of you don't have the time, you don't have the experience, and that's why I'm here today to make it completely simple. Whether you're just starting out, whether you are experienced, you're definitely in for a ride because you're going to hear some different stuff today. <laughs> I guarantee you. Uh, it's an invention of mine. And it's completely biodegradable and it's completely simple. So those of you wondering uh, how, like, if should I even start this? If you can literally draw a line in the dirt and make a crisscross, just, just two lines and, and poke four holes in between each one of those. It's called the square foot gardening method, which I did not invent. It's by Mel Bartholomew, but I've uh, improved upon it and completely changed some stuff around. But given that if you're able to poke some holes in the ground with your finger and draw a, a crisscross, you will be growing stuff and you will be growing it at the greatest of ease. So let's get into this stuff. Uh, I'm jacked up. This is uh, what I've been building here for a long time. That's why I'm trying to limit my podcast to just one a week. And I wanted to share with you guys what, what I'm doing, but also to help you guys out. So let's get into it. This is square one, uh, step one, gardening the biodegradable container gardening way. So regardless whether you're gonna garden my way, where you're gonna do stuff in, in biodegradable containers or you're just gonna have a garden, you can do anything you want. We're, we're gonna talk about the ground prep today. And the first thing you're gonna do with ground prep is you are going to make yourself a little fence uh, around your area. Now, if you're in the city and you got squirrels and, and that's it, you don't have rabbits like in the country, like where I, I kind of live, uh, you might not necessarily have this problem, but if you've got a dog or uh, if you've got chickens and things like that, you might want to consider putting this up. So the very first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to build a four by four foot garden. But the very first thing we're going to do is put a fence around it just to keep some the, maybe kids and stuff like that out of it. So what you're going to do is you're going to dig yourself a trench of about, uh, I'd say about three to four, uh, five inches a square. You're going to dig yourself a trench about a good eight inches wide. And again, this is gonna be 10 feet and it needs to me measure from the inside of the edges. You wanna take a tape measure, you wanna measure 10, 10 feet. You can put yourself some stakes in the ground and put some string to mark it all off, to make it all nice and square. It's not really necessary, but if you're into uh, aesthetics and you want it to look nice, you can do it that way um, and get it everything all nice and perfect and streamlined. So you're gonna take yourself a pick, uh, a pick uh, uh, or a shovel and you're going to, uh, you're going to start uh, digging this hole about five inches thick and about eight inches wide. And you're gonna go all the way around the edge 
Uh, the next thing you're going to do is we need to put some stakes in here to hold up the fence. Now they have these uh, fence fence stakes. I forget what they call them. Uh, they're they're the, the, they're made out of iron or steel where you pound them in the ground. Uh, they're green with like a white top on, on them. Uh, you can use wood if you if you'd like. The wood may rot at time uh, uh, in time. Uh, but what you're going to do is you're going to go to each inside corner of this 10 by 10 foot um, square that this trench that you uh, dug and you're going to dig a hole or what you're going to do is what I like to do is get yourself an auger, a garden auger. It hooks up to a, uh, a power drill or a cordless drill and it's basically like a giant, uh, uh, like a, a, a corkscrew. And what this thing does is it does all the work for you. It leaves a hole of the diameter of about uh, three inches or so. And what you uh, do is, you, as long as you don't put a lot of pressure on this thing, you can uh, let it do the work. And what it's going to do is just blow all the dirt out and make this perfect cyl cylindrical hole in the ground where you can stick your post in. Uh, for those of you who live in areas where you don't really have hard soils and stuff like that, I think you can get away with just pounding a stake or a, a wood pole in the ground. Um, but for us, where we live out here in North County, there's a lot of clay and a lot of hard stuff. So that garden auger tool, which you can find at Home Depot, I don't know who makes it, uh, you got to ask somebody in there, but that definitely comes in handy for us out here in the dry hard soils. So we're going to take our posts uh, or, and we're going to stick them inside these holes or we're just going to line them up right on the, on the, ed the inside edge of the corner and you're going to get a uh, post pounder or a large sledgehammer and you're going to hammer these posts inside the uh, ground on all four corners. Next what we're going to do it's the magic number is about three feet. I like to use chicken wire. It keeps the baby rabbits. And for some reason, I have never had squirrels enter my garden. So it's uh, pretty proof for dogs. And uh, I don't know about cats. I think they can jump on over. Uh, but it's, it's pretty much foolproof for the rabbits and squirrels and things like that. So what you're going to do is you're going to uh, wrap those posts again on the inside edges of your garden. Uh, with the uh, chicken wire, but you're going to take that chicken wire and you're going to lay it down and you're going to cover that That's about six inches where you dug that trench All right, you get what I'm saying You're going to lay it in there and you're going to give yourself a straight line from top to bottom and then six inches like a L uh, Going touching on that, that the dirt. We're going to go and backfill the dirt now Around that whole perimeter and what this is going to do in my observations uh, growing uh, food with nature is that the uh, rabbits will come or the squirrels, I'm not sure who it was, but somebody showed up and started digging right at the point of the fence where it meets the, uh, uh, where it meets the soil. And what they started doing was digging in there and they got their, their little claws stuck inside the, uh, the wire and that deterred them. And they stopped digging, they try to get underneath. They can see the food, but they're not smart enough to like start digging a, a few inches uh, before. So that's the way you can keep the, uh, the critters out. Um, so that's our fence. And that's our, 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 uh, our, our uh, posts and everything in there. We got the full base down now. So now we have just plain ground. Um, next thing we're gonna do is we need a ground prep for critters. And what we're gonna do is we are going to, you know what, sorry guys, it's getting hot at the beach here. I'm in my mobile studio in my 96 pickup truck. I'm gonna have to turn on the truck and put the AC on because I'm starting to sweat here. So sorry for the background noise. Let's go ahead and pull this thing up. But I'm pretty sure the audio is not that bad. Okay, so getting back to it, we're um, we're gonna get the ground prep ready for the critters. And what we're gonna do, uh, very first thing, is we're gonna use Sluggo Plus. And I'd like to say that I'm not affiliated with anybody uh, at present. I have no sponsors. I have jack shit other than um, stuff that I've used that works and also is natural. So. It's got to be Sluggo Plus, and I guess an ingredient in there is iron. And what that's going to do is that's going to do like what it says: is get all the slugs and the snails. It's going to—it's a bait. It's going to kill them, but it also does the earwigs. For uh, for some reason out here, we have tremendous amounts of uh, earwigs, and they—I mean thousands of them. There'd be, you know, if you those of you who follow me, I live in an RV. You know, I live simple in a tiny house, and. Uh, they're, these guys, I have stuff outside. They're in my barbecue. They're in the coffee maker and the air fryer. Like there's, there's just abundance of them. So you want to go and spread the sluggo first before you cover this up with uh, cardboard or, or any kind of ground cover. Just as an extra, extra precautionary. Uh, and it's all natural. The one thing, like I said, uh, with with these guys is uh, with the sluggo is that it's supposed to be safer on your pets, your children, also uh, the the uh, lizards. 
Uh, they did not. I know that lizards eat earwigs and slugs and stuff like that. I think they eat slugs. I know they eat earwigs. And I haven't seen a decline in population. And I've seen it done on large scale with the Sluggo Plus. Uh, and it's it's really, it's, it works and it's really good stuff. So, you know, uh, around here you guys are going to find I do not endorse anything that hurts nature. It's for us to live in symbiosis. All my lifestyle design, every, the alternative lifestyle design is what I call it. And everything is designed to try to work in harmony with nature as best as possible. So now we did our ground cover. The other thing you guys can do is you can get some cornmeal and you can mix this with diatomaceous earth. Uh, I don't have time to go into all the details, but that DE is like these crushed fucking animal uh, bones, the stuff left over. I, I'm probably butchering it, but it's natural. Uh, you can actually eat the stuff. But if you mix it with um, diatomaceous earth with the cornmeal, what's going to happen is the ants and stuff, if you have that kind of problem, they're going to come and they're going to eat the cornmeal and they're going to roll around this DE, diatomaceous earth. And so there's different information about it. I'm not sure. I'm not a scientist. But some people say it slices up their their uh, body and it'll, it'll kill them all off. Some say that it dehydrates them uh, or takes off a layer of their hard shells. Uh, uh, like if you've got beetles and stuff like that, uh, it's going to get in between their armor, like they're in, in their uh, their skin, and it'll naturally kill them off so they don't come invade your garden. We'd love to. I do have ways that you don't even have to kill slugs or ants or anything like that, but that's very advanced. We're going to get into that later on uh, uh, in, in the in the show. Uh, not, not today's show, but in, in an episode later. So, yeah, we got all that down now. And I actually, one more thing on the uh, cornmeal is that some people say, uh, I guess there's some science behind it that uh, by accident that the cornmeal will actually suppress uh, weeds. So that's kind of a good thing too. Uh, one thing I found was instant potatoes, which is kind of, uh, kind of like, this is kind of sick, kind of sad. I'm not sure. Like I'd rather, uh, basically rats and mice. If you put dried potatoes down, they're going to eat the dried potatoes. And what's going to happen is the dried potatoes are going to expand in their bellies and blow up like a balloon. And then you get how it uh, extinguishes them. I almost would rather have a rat trap with some cheese on it. The rat goes to sniff it, and wham, hits it, breaks its neck, and you're done if you got a rat problem. Um, again, I don't endorse doing this, but uh, we lock ourselves, our gardens in our backyards. We don't have coyotes to keep the rats in check and, uh, and the owls and everything. And, and we got to take the matters in our own, in my basic opinion, which all everything in my show is just my opinion. But all right, so yeah, we got that down. The very next thing we're going to need to do is that we're going to need to put some ground cover down there. Now, if you're doing container gardening, um, I would recommend that you not use cardboard because it's slippery when you walk on it. Uh, it's going to get wet. If you try to pin it down with stuff, it's just going to tear. I mean, you can slip and fall on your ass. It's not really a, a good thing, good thing at all. So uh, what I prefer is wood chips, and I get mine for free. Although we are through the COVID thing right now, it's been hard to get my hands on some. But you can get a whole truckload. There's, there's apps like Chip Drop things like that where they'll come and just dump a whole pile of wood chips on your property and you can uh, use it to your advantage it's natural it breaks down uh, you'll have better soil you'll have microbiology and stuff going on and, and uh, uh, mushrooms and funguses growing which is a good thing but the the best thing that you're going to find with your containers uh, such as five gallon buckets or uh, the root pouches the grow bags or the biodegradable container gardening system that i've got is that you put them on the wood chips and you can move them around and settle them so that they're perfectly level right because we're going to automate this thing we're going to get into that we're going to water uh, when that top gets dried if you've got stuff that's sitting on a little bit of an incline or something all the water is going to pour uh, on, it's going to settle on on uh, the lowest side right the laws of physics and gravity here uh, so what happens is your soil gets really dry also if you're using burlap like i do what happens is that water gets on it if it's not level it just needs to soak in for a while and depending also which type of soil you're going to use um, it's going to beat off of it and it's going to go to the lowest point so you want these things level so that it can fill up and then night drain nice and even throughout the uh the container and the wood chips on the bottom also help when you're doing uh, root pouches or the biodegradable container gardening like i do to keep the airflow underneath so that there's less uh rot in the in the uh burlap which is what we use for the for the lining for mine or your root pouches um and it goes it gets critical we're going to get into this you don't need to know about it yet uh, but it's air pruning and it's where they basically the, the uh, roots start to come out and poke out of the bags and the air cauterizes them and it's more gentle on the plant instead of growing in a bucket where the leaves get tangled and it starts suffocating itself we're gonna we're gonna get into that 
Um, next here uh, is we got our mulch. We got our way down now. Uh, I'd like to add, so if you're just going to do your regular garden where you're going to dig up the soil in this 10 by 10 foot area, or you're going to make a little raised bed or something, um, you can just mulch around it, uh, mulch your pathways, and just leave the areas that you're going to work the soil. And you guys pretty much get the point now. We've built our, our outer shell. We're protected now from most of the elements. Uh, and we've done some groundwork with slugs and pest control. Now we're going to move on to the next, uh, which is a garden trellis. So the cheapest way and the, the, the most efficient, I would say, in cost and also performance uh, is galvanized steel. Uh, you can do wood uh, for a trellis. You can do these little teepee things and all that kind of stuff. But you know what? The, even the bamboo and all that rots. If you got, a, you're, if you can get your hands on that stuff somewhere, you just keep replenishing it, replacing it as it goes. That's fine too. That is awesome. I actually prefer that. But it also is uh, galvanized steel. You can get these uh, half inch or three quarter inch uh, uh, pipe conduit for uh, or pipes for electric conduit. You can find this at Home Depot. Uh, they also have a 45 degree. Um, uh, little coupling that goes on it so you can literally stick these uh, pipes in the ground you can hammer them in you can secure them to the, your fence posts which I prefer to do that's why we did the 10 foot exactly because these pipes come in 10 feet uh, lengths so remember we put in our posts now you can take like some wire or, or some bolts or, or some uh, pipe pipe clamps and you can secure these uh, 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 quarter, uh, I'm sorry, half inch or three quarter inch pipes up uh, the, the uh, uh, four posts. And, and preferably, you want to build your trellis on something that's facing south, right? That's where all the sun's going to come here in the United States, anyways. I know we got some listeners out in Australia, you know, New Zealand and Brazil and all that. Uh, I don't know where, where your uh, sun's coming from, but uh, yeah. You want it facing towards where the sun rises towards the south here in the United States. And then uh, there's a reason we're gonna get into that. So you've got this uh, half inch, which I think is sufficient. Uh, you don't need three quarter. You just literally stick them inside these fittings and you get a screwdriver and you just screw screw the ends of the pipes in. Uh, you got a 10 foot length running uh, on the, as a top rail. Then you got two coming down the side, which you're gonna uh, um, secure to your posts. And uh, this thing's for like under 10 bucks. You got yourself a, a permanent trellis. I'd like to give a word to you that uh, I did some research on galvanized steel and it's uh, the galvanized is built out of I guess zinc they expose a lot of zinc to it they dip it in hot zinc to keep it from uh, uh, rusting out eventually though that zinc's gonna run out when it drips off the uh, galvanized steel what does it do it puts zinc in the soil uh, which is uh, and it does it slowly it doesn't do it all at once so and it's a healthy thing for soil soil needs zinc so in my opinion just my opinion that uh, this stuff is actually good to to uh, to use and it's nice and permanent so now we have our trellis uh, framework up next what we're going to talk about is we need something to uh, to put for our plants to climb so the reason we're doing this is that we're going to plant some like say tomatoes uh, you can do zucchini you can do uh, cucumbers and things like that climbing beans and you're going to plant all towards that back area we're going to layer this right we're going to put the big ones that like to climb that if they're going to face the sun uh, whether you're in ground or you're going to do container gardening uh, and then we're going to slowly taper off say like our, your tomatoes are six feet tall right uh, I forgot to mention too, when you're hanging this trellis, try to hang it exactly to the area where you can reach up, just to where you can comfortably tie a knot. That's how high you want. You want to get as high as possible. So now that we have that there, and we're going to layer our plants. Uh, the very first ones, like the tomatoes and stuff like that, we're going to either put, they have nylon nets that you can tie to this thing. Uh, they're not biodegradable. They're cheap. Uh, some of you may like them better than what I have, but what I prefer is buying some jute some uh, uh, biodegradable rope which you can find at Home Depot, Lowe's, any hardware store. Uh, I forgot what the name of some are but it says it on the package. This is biodegradable. It's made out of natural fibers. So what we're going to do is tie that rope to the trellis and we're going to hang it down. You can either pin it to the ground or you can tie it to your five gallon bucket or the handle on your uh, root pouch or your, your, your uh, grow bag or you can tie it to the uh, galvanized basket which holds the biodegradable container gardening system which we're going to get into. So you're going to tie it to that basket and so it's just basically it's lined up and what you're going to do is you're going to cinch your plant up like your tomatoes and cucumbers and just train them to go right up the uh, rope and you've got on the back end you've got all your, your big plants hanging right so next what we have is maybe say things like bell peppers right those go in front of the tomatoes and cucumbers next in line would be something like let's say spinach and uh, 
uh, lettuces. Next after that, we're gonna do like radishes and maybe some herbs and things like that that aren't so high. So you're layering this thing basically like a photo, photo tech, uh, uh, like a, a solar panel and you're letting everything get the sun in the summer and in the winter. Uh, and everybody's got like a, an even light, like kind of like a stadium, right? The, the plants are experiencing the shell, so everybody gets to see. <laughs> so uh, that's what I've got today uh, so far. There's a heck of a lot to go into. Um, this is most simplest way to garden, you guys. Um, I want to get you guys started on this. We're going to do a little series on it. I uh, figured because that's, that's what I'm doing right now, building a secondary business. And I'm trying to get at least one podcast out a week. Uh, but yeah, I want to get you guys growing your own food because this is very, very important. There's ways that you, I, I know that, that schools, you're going to be done online and stuff. But with gardening, you can teach math, science, biology, uh, physics. You can teach them everything. And hands-on learning is the best way, right? Uh, it's known in the learning pyramid. Uh, going, sitting through lectures and, and reading, uh, hearing somebody talk to you and, and seeing stuff, it, just, it doesn't really, it's not the best absorption rate. The best absorption is actually to get your hands on it and start uh, uh, working with it. And what better way to teach your kids about measuring how many tomatoes, uh, pounds of tomatoes they're able to grow and how many seeds to do and, and square footing things and, and, and mixing soils ratios, you know, uh, one third, one third, one third makes what? It makes one. You can just teach them all these different things, get their hands on and that's going to sink in their heads a hell of a lot better. And you get to your stacking functions, which is a huge deal on, on my show here. Stacking functions, doing many things, having something that serves many, many purposes. Uh, it's kind of off the subject right now, but uh, I'm very proud of this one. I never really realized it. What I do is I get cardio on the beach, which is behind me over here, and I go running or walking. I also take a bag with me with a pair of pinchers, and uh, I pick up trash and I'm getting cardio. I'm also showing people that, hey, there's some of us who give a shit out here and keep the place clean. Um, and maybe I inspire them to go, hey, maybe I should pick up some trash too. So I'm getting cardio and I'm getting, uh, uh, picking up, cleaning up my ocean and my environment, making the world a better place for my kids. And I'm also living by example. And I think growing your own food has the same kind of ring to it. It has the same thing that when you're, as I said, when I bring it back to how I opened this up, when my mom gave me those nasturtium seeds, which are edible by the way too. You can eat nasturtium flowers and I think the leaves too. Um, never tried them. Actually, I did try a nasturtium. I didn't really care for it. It was very bitter. Uh, but yeah, it's serving many purposes, guys. And whether shit hits the fan or it doesn't, you're still going to come out ahead. You're going to have something beautiful. You're going to have something you can share, something you can use to teach your children or something to even look at. And if you're going to do it, as I say a lot about growing your own food on this show, do it for the flavor. I will fuck up your mouth like, well, that came out bad. Uh, whatever. I will fuck your fucking your taste buds up because once you taste that that tomato that you grow and you pick it when it's ready to be eaten everything pales in comparison all the, the foods in our grocery stores are built for shelf life they're bred for shelf life they're bred for color for aesthetics not about what they can do for you the performance which is like the show we everything is about how things can serve you and we want to serve your taste buds so if you're going to do it for any reason do it for the flavor and then and not to get in even to the nutrition so i'm blabbing my mouth off guys sorry but i get uh, very passionate about this kind of stuff and uh we got a hell of a lot coming down the pipeline please comment uh email me with any questions you have uh, also i'd like to say before i forget you can check me out on instagram uh there's also a private facebook group ask to join uh, everybody gets uh, accepted right away but, uh, both handles uh the instagram is the, uh, it's biodeg uh, BC Gardening Guy. I couldn't get the biodegradable container gardening, uh, any of that. So it's B as in boy, C as in cat, gardening guy. And that's where I'm posting a lot of the videos and stuff. And I actually did a step-by-step -step video so you guys can actually see the stuff I talked about today and how I'm doing it. Uh, also, the Facebook group is the uh, uh, BC. Oh, my God, I screwed up. Well, we're all human, right? I think it's the biodegradable container gardening or the BC... BC Garden, San Diego BC Gardening. That's what it is. I'm on track now. Uh, thank you, Scotty, for bringing me back up into my brain. Uh, it's the BC uh, San Diego uh, BC Gardening, and that's the uh, that's the local uh, Facebook group page there. Um, but also, guys, if you like this sort of thing, check us out on uh, TikTok, on Instagram. Uh, up and in it is the name of the show. Um, we've got extra stuff there that's coming down the pipe. We're a little slow right now, but. Uh, you can check out the uh, YouTube videos and all that kind of stuff. Anywhere on uh, most handles, uh, most platforms, it's all up and in it. 
Uh, we do not have a website. It's coming soon. But that's it, guys. I'm blabbing off again. As I always say, uh, go out there and have yourself a near life experience. Do not lose your muchness. Carry on the fire. Human up. Live it, love it, own it. And bone it, my friends. <laughs>